council meetings, planning and zoning, and union negotiations, several meetings. That's about it. I represented the city for Memorial Day. We had it up here at the community center because it was too hot out and everything. And we had a great turnout, which really was nice to be appreciated. And you went to the school, right? Like? Yeah, I went to the school. Okay. Thank you guys for doing that for me. Much appreciated. Uh, Kevin. All I have is the activity report that's in the packet. So, unless there's any questions. No questions for Kevin? Matt. Uh, Mayor Council, uh, minutes for the Park and Rec meeting are in your packet. Um, just some of the highlights were uh, progression of a possible daddy daughter dance coming in September. Um, more than just for uh, an adult than a young girl. Um, not sure if it's going to end up going third party or if it's actually going to be sponsored through Park and Rec, depending exactly on whether or not it's going to be a fundraiser or more of just a uh, uh, fun event. Um, some of the dollar values haven't been finalized on, but uh, the information I was discussed is in your packet for review for you guys. Um, Summer Splash update um, is the event that's coming in mid July here. Um, we were looking at getting basically a, uh, a water slide um, rental through CLAT up in Buffalo. Um, all the dollar values, I think right now we're looking at not to exceed $300, which is still well within our um, line item for that, um, unless there is stern opposition from the council. We'll be moving forward with that, especially with the, trying to get that done through Wayne and stuff like that um, for that event. Uh, Spark of the Park event, um, that's once again just going to progress through that. You should be seeing a flyer for the next newsletter as well. Um, probably won't be quite as big with as many vendors, but more specialized vendors this year, I believe. Um, but we're just progressing on that information. There's in the packet as well. Um, and I know this is probably the next one item as well, but uh, just accepting the resignation of uh, Chuck Smallwood, Drew Krug, Kurt Anderson, as well as Abby Myers. Um, we did actually have this meeting all under the premise that when I reviewed the city council meeting from last night that Brew had just stepped down. Um, otherwise we wouldn't have enough council members or commission members actually to run a meeting. But uh, pending that, all these votes are going to be kind of up in the air unless we assume that now is going to be final accepting their resignations and just moving forward. But uh, at the time we did, the premise was that Brew had not actually stepped down yet because I hadn't, I hadn't seen anything in writing. At all, but if not, if anything, I was just the moderator of it, and I mean, as long as you guys still here for meeting minutes, it's being approval for anything that was done there. I don't know. I don't know if we need approval for any expenditures or anything, since it's still well within the limits, or since we technically might not have had a, uh, we would have had a quorum, just not minimum required numbers. On the commission. No, everything's within your budget, um, Wayne. When he needs to go purchase that, you want to assist him because you're spending authority. So. I can do that. Okay. Thank you. Other than that, I think that's all it is for the meeting minutes. Um, we did have two, or at least one at the meeting. We talked to Barry Remberger, who was there. Um, and he should already have everything through the city since he's on the planning zone commission. And I have, we had no problems with him. Joining once again when you're talking to Sylvia put in hers. I hadn't been aware of that, but I worked with her. Okay. And okay. And I guess I have no problem considering I think with all these resignations I'm the only one. So Well thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> so but I have no problem. We were very Other than that, any questions, concerns, or frustrations? Because I use people to do job. It's way too early to tell. <laughs> I know. No questions? Okay, no perfect. Thank you. Okay, then we would have to um, discussion on Barry and Sylvia joining Park and Rec. Wouldn't they be through number three? We need to accept the resignations first. Yeah, the two, yeah, we do. Yeah. 
Okay, we have to accept the resignation of Bruce Blue, Kurt Anderson, Abby Myers, and Chuck Smallwood. I'll make a motion to accept the resignations. I'll second. Uh, Roy. Aye. Lloyd. Aye. I'll vote aye then. Aye. Motion passes four to zero. Okay, now we can uh, go to approve Sylvia Henry to Park and Rec. I make a motion to have Sylvia Henry join Park and Rec. I'll second that, and I will vote aye then. Aye. Lloyd. Aye. Roy. Okay, motion passes 3, 0, oh, and 1. And Barry Reinberger. I'll make a motion to accept Barry Reinberger on the planning and parking rank also. And I will second that. Uh, Roy. Aye. I'll vote aye, Roy. Aye. Ben. Aye. Motion passes 4 to 0 for Barry. All right, moving on to planning and zoning. Uh, Mark, you want to? Approval of the amendments, yeah. Any questions? I'll make a motion then to approve the minutes of planning and zoning. Second. Ben. Aye. Lloyd. Aye. Roy. Aye. I'll vote aye. Motion passes four to zero. And now, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mayor Council, uh, this item before you tonight is a request for concept plan review for the uh, a concept plan subdivision uh, on the Preserve Montrose property. This uh, request has come before you in the form that uh, we brought to you a pre-development agreement which gave the uh, developer the ability to go through the process and seek approvals from the City Council, uh, ultimately for the development of this property. And we laid out a process for what it would take if we were to move forward with the, the development. There would be concept plan review, which is coming before you tonight, plat amendment, which would essentially be to replat the existing property to accommodate the proposed changes, and then a conditional use permit amendment related to the existing plan unit development uh, that is currently in place on that property. And so the city had gone out for RFP uh, on this property and over the last four years has uh, received a, uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, questions and a lot of uh, various uh, kind of unofficial proposals for various aspects or, or parts of the property, not, not always the whole property, um, but it hasn't received a formal submittal until this uh, particular submittal that's coming forward. So the uh, city worked with this developer a little bit in the preliminary stages of just developing the concept plan, looking at what's in existence in the, on the current property, what utilities, what roads, what infrastructure is in place, what would be uh, need to be done to bring this property uh, to a point that it could be developed, and then uh, were there any other issues or concerns. And so, the city worked with uh, the developer Paxmar LLC for a couple of months just looking at the layout of the property uh, and the proposed development. And with that, they developed a concept plan that they'd like then feedback from the city relating to to see if it fits with what the city's vision is for that particular property. This concept plan did go through planning commission uh, at their last meeting and at um, the end of the meeting, there were still concerns that planning commissioners had relating to the property, um, and ultimately, um, they didn't give, uh, I guess, a positive recommendation, but there really isn't an approval process at concept plan. Uh, it's more so to just provide feedback and comments to the developer and let them take that and then decide how they want to come back or what changes uh, they would want to make moving forward to, to going uh, from concept plan to a plat development or a full plat. And so with all of that said, the concept plan that's in the packet tonight is uh, the same concept plan that you all had seen when we approved the preliminary development agreement with this particular developer. What they're looking to do is take the uh, 55 acre site, which is the overall property, and replat what was 174 townhomes on that property, which was the original approval in 2007. Those 174 townhouse units were comprised of, uh, or multifamily units were comprised of twin homes, fourplexes, uh, sixplexes, and eightplex buildings. 
Um, and so the, the total amount that is platted currently on that property is 174. Those 174 units were going to be accessed primarily via private roads that were proposed to be developed within the development, uh, and then one public road, which is Willow Avenue, which goes north-south. A part of all of that infrastructure uh, was installed um, and is in existence on the site, although it hasn't been uh, inspected or, or uh, confirmed the condition of that existing infrastructure. For the most part, the roads are going to have to be rebuilt um, as they're not currently sufficient and have uh, essentially fallen apart since they were installed. Paxmark came forward with the concept plan that is proposing to replat that property into 99 residential units. It would, in uh, for, for all practical purposes, try to utilize existing utilities on site and utilize uh, most of the configuration of the existing plat on that property. The 99 units would break down into two essential unit types, single family detached townhomes, which would be 45 units, and two family attached townhomes, which would be 54 units. The applicant, the, or the uh, developer in the city did talk about the fact that rather than looking at private roads, we, it was recommended that they plot full right of way, 60 foot right of way throughout the development and build fully uh, compliant public streets, 32 foot wide roads throughout the uh, development so that uh, the homes would not be accessed via private roads. And so they, that's shown in the current plat. A couple of other points on the plat, and there was some discussion at this. Uh, previously, in the existing plat with the PUD standards that were adopted, uh, the front yard setback was 25 feet. The applicant is proposing 20 feet. The side yard setback was 10 feet. The applicant is proposing six. The rear yard setback was uh, six feet and the applicant's proposing 15 feet. You can see by that they're not proposing to meet the front yard, but they're proposing, proposing to increase the rear yard. They could meet the front yard, but it would reduce the rear yard, which does limit things like decks and, and other stuff in the backyard. So they're saying they'd rather have it leave a little bit more room in the back than what was permitted previously. The other thing to note on the side yard setback, there was discussion at the Planning Commission about this. Um, the side yard setback for uh, the 10 feet was in between multifamily buildings, and they're only going to be doing single family detached and twin homes. So you're talking about maybe an eightplex building that had a 10 foot side yard setback, and now you're talking about a single family home. They're proposing to have a, a six foot setback. But one of the things that was noted is all of these lots would be entirely association maintained. There would be no outdoor storage permitted through the covenants, and that would be um, something that would be set through the covenants of this development so that the idea that you'd have to get around to the backside of the property, there wouldn't be anywhere to, there, you couldn't do anything with the backside. Now, they said typically in their developments, they do allow some small sheds as a part of uh, development, but it's limited to 120 square feet. Um, and so it's got a limited potential. But all of the areas, front yard, side yard, rear yards, would be association maintaining and it would be mowed uh, by the association. All driveways would be plowed by the association, and then the city would just maintain our public roads that would be in the development. So that is something that's a little bit different than you know typical uh, development. I did have a discussion with the uh, developer just relating to how they set that association up. Um, you know what, how, how they would foresee that uh, being put into place, and the developers here, and they can talk a little bit more if you have questions relating to that. Um, other than that, they, there was parkland that was dedicated in the initial development. There's approximately eight acres. There was some discussion at the planning commission that there should be some park maintained in this location just due to the number of homes that are being proposed. I have had additional conversation with the developer relating to parks and. They're willing to work with the city on, on both the idea if we want to put a park and a park facility in this development and or if we want to have some cash potentially for the community park. It's something they have discussed with us and, and try to work out um, what, would, what would work for the city as it relates to that. Uh, but I did have a discussion about both those ideas um, and I think they're open. And then um, there was a question um, Wait, actually, you had the question on the AUAR if you did look that up. It's a $500 per acre fee. It is applicable to this development, so it would be applied. 
um, and paid for uh, by the developer. And then um, just last thing that I had noted in the uh, concept plan was uh, the developer is indicating that they built this out in essentially three phases. They show kind of how those phases lay out. Um, but they, they believe that initial phase, uh, they, they do probably something in the neighborhood of 30 plus units a year um, building that out. Their target market, and I can let them talk about it a little bit more, is both uh, empty nester and uh, uh, kind of move-in family types. They've seen both go into their development and wouldn't be limited. Uh, to one type or another, um, or one uh, kind of demographic or another, uh, they would open it up, but it would be wholly association maintained. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, again, concept plan, we don't approve or deny. Uh, we just provide feedback to the applicant, ask questions, um, provide some direction, uh, or if there's concerns or issues that are seen by the council. There was, there was no issue with the AUIR? No. No. Okay. There's no park fee. They said they're going to negotiate something there. Yeah, I think they're open to whether or not we want to put some something on the park plan that's in this development. Um, I think we can have that conversation or if we want to look at maybe if they're willing to make a dedication in cash to the community park. I think that's something we can look at as we go through. Process. I look for more direction from council and parks on that. Um, but I did talk to the developer about I think it's something that we can keep talking about and try to figure out if there's something. That's yeah, so okay. That'd be quite a lot of change here, about $160,000 in our fees there. If we were to not take any land, I think. Yeah. yeah. And remember, we already do have that land dedicated, so it would have to be, we'd have to, we'd have to figure something out with the developer on if that is fully developable or if they could get any additional units that would make sense. On a charter it says two acres. Of land rest must be swamp. Uh, there's some trail area. Um, yeah, I see the purple there, is that the trail area? Uh, Going yes. Going all the way around the public. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 down a little bit farther just so it shows the two acres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. be yeah. right there. Park fund could probably use some money. With a bunch of homes there for that demographic, having a park there would be a big deal too. Yeah, yeah. When were, when were they thinking of building? <clears throat> you want to come up with you? Hi, I'm Alan Rachel with Pax Um Yeah, I'll just answer your questions. When were we thinking about building? As soon as we could get. Um, too late for a 2018 project, you probably get in the ground right away in 2019 in the spring.
because those mortgagors have to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult. And then you get in the situation where if it does go to fund, nobody can um, convey their property because uh, the underwriters for the new buyers require the HOAs to be running. So the, the portion that I think that you're going to be most concerned about is the first two years and, and how it gets built out from that. After that, it's, it's, uh, it's highly unlikely that it would ever go to fund just because you'd have the velocity and the number of units that it would make it um, unlikely. Now, would the fire department got any questions on this housing development? No, um, it's fairly in line with the prior plans for the most part as far as our um, requirements go for everything. Um, I'm happy to see that it's going to be public roads rather than what's down in rock over there. So thank you. That's the big thing. And now would the association be honest in <coughs> maintaining the park too? Um, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. Uh, association maintaining a public park. Uh, it's something that we could look at. If there, uh, I really don't feel very many of the public are going to go in there because number one, they won't see it, but I won't even know it's there. But they have the parks are dead, Montrose now, nobody knows it's there. You know. We could talk about that, and that could be. Uh, yeah, we got to run away out there. I don't know the symmetrics of it, the city. We do that anyway. We do we mow all the way down and we're to over into that yeah. right now. So Yeah, but if they take over it'll be their responsibility. Under discussion we have. Oh. Any other discussion? What do you need from us, Mark? Anything? I don't you need any I would just like to know how, how you feel about um, our concept as a whole. Uh, the decreasing of the units, we decreased it drastically from the original, and uh, the, the setbacks. Like Mark uh, said, we're trying to bring the building up a little bit to the front, and we're trying to extend the backyards. Um, so the further you push the house away from the front, the, the smaller the rear yard is. Uh, with a 20 foot setback, you can still fit two cars in the driveway because you're going to have extra between the lot line and the back of the curb. There's going to be um, about uh, 14 feet. Yeah, well, four foot, 14 foot in the driveway. So you can almost fit four cars in the driveway. So what are the garages going to be like? A garage and a half then? It'll be a two car garage. And uh, a lot of these units will actually be extra deep. They'll be 26 foot deep versus 20 foot. To give them an extra six foot, so they're not as tight, and they allow a little bit more storage. The HOA would also control all the units. They would control, you know, nothing could be kept outside. We, I think you mentioned accessory buildings. I don't think that works in this uh, scenario. The HOA is maintaining everything, so we probably want to do accessory buildings. Um, they would handle the lawn maintenance. They would handle the snow maintenance. They would handle all that stuff. Um, they would handle the exterior for the attached units. Um, so if anybody fell behind on the, the maintenance or the, the appeal of their, of their building, the HOA would have, could step in and, and fix that for the, for the unit owners. They would assess them. But they would have the rights to make sure that everything was looking, looking nice and looking up to the standards um, that the HOA would require. You talked about a tax base at planning and zoning. I don't remember what the number was, though. What it would bring to the city? You know, I don't remember exactly either. Uh, we're shooting for, uh, you know, you're going to be, the units that need are going to be anywhere from the high hundreds to 300,000. So that your market's about, you know, in between 200 and 300,000. I think I said about 30 million. Do you remember? I think that's right around where it was. I shrank the math in my head quick, but okay. it's probably in that range. Okay. Plus all your hookups and connection fees that you get. Yeah, all the normal, all the normal building permit fees. 
And we are open to um, if the park board so chooses, and if this body so chooses, um, if you don't want all that park, you can definitely look at incorporating some additional units in and uh, swapping some cash for that. You already have the park dedication, mm -hmm. so it would have to be. Yeah, we'd have to work out. There'd be some legal convenience in deals, but uh, I think we're open to that. Okay. Now, the road that you're going to have going in there and stuff like that, is that going to be a good tar? Yes. Have some cheap stuff with a good base underneath it to don't break up? It would have to meet all your all your city standards and have to meet all the testing, roll testing, all that stuff. Um, that's something that your city engineer will be looking at when it's when it's installed and it, and it will have to pass his muster test. So because like some of these houses you look at where the tower comes up to your garage and stuff like that, some of it sinks an inch or two inches sure. and then you gotta re cut that out and redo it again because you ain't got a good base on it. Sure, um, and you know we, we we try to meet or exceed city standards in everything that we do. Um, in this development too, specifically, we'll probably do concrete driveways versus asphalt driveways. They last longer. They look right. nicer. I think they're a real added value. They are. Concrete is always better. Yep. Some of that tar you use today is too oily, it just keeps sinking and it don't cure. Sure. Yep, and those roads out there are pretty rough, so they'll all right. torn out and, and redone basically. Any other discussion? No, the only other question would be is how we arrive at what, what kind of a deal you're going to make up. The park fees. Well, the park fee would have to go back to. Park Commission to see what they're. Yeah, we take it back to parks mm -hmm. and then see what they want and then we'll bring, bring it back and we come back at the replat time to the council. And I mean, I just want to make sure too we're on the, you know, the council's on the same page because once these guys go in and spend a bunch of money and put together a pretty significant plan set to do this. So that's why they wanted to just right. get your feedback and make sure too so I don't bring you back something and then everybody goes on. Yeah, we, we don't want to do that, like Mark, but we're already wasting our time on it. So right. I just, I think it's good that, you know, we have that. But I think the park is something I kind of talk to them about, so we'll, we'll go have those discussions. As long as they're both still doing it, it's a good question. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll go back on. We got our park commission here, so I'm sure they'll have it on the next agenda for that. Yeah, so. yeah and like Mark said, our, our next step will be to, uh, to draft a full set of construction plans. So really going from this into the full the full construction plan which is the majority of the costs when you're driving this. You're just looking for us as a I just want to have some, yeah have <laughs> some, uh, make sure that okay. we're all thinking in the same direction. So right. we're, not, we're not wasting any time. Because now I'm just saying you have to run out there for anything or something like that when they charge the home association for something that the city would have to get involved in. Or would you guys take care of it? Well, city had to run out and look at something, or park and rec had to look at something. If we had this pond or something like this, and had to go out and cut the grass and all this stuff and maintain it. Uh, I'm sorry. That'd be the homeowners. That'd be the HOA that would be doing all that. Well, I mean, if this, the pond would be our engineer, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I think it's a good question. I think what he's asking is if we, if say your homeowner association is failing to maintain the perm or, or the area by the park or they're not mowing and we end up going out there could we assess it and i think we would we we assess it right. to the association right? yeah i think because they give us four rights to, to they be the owner right. of those out lots right so then we would have somebody that we could <coughs> assess correct yeah i think that's right yeah. that's a good question thank you We have a consensus then to let them proceed with the planning, or you guys have a different idea? No, well, like I say, the only thing I'm interested in is to see what the park situation happens on the feet, but if they want to go ahead with that, they can work on some of so. Your single family detached townhomes, how many styles of houses are you going to be building? Just the same one that you've been building? Uh, in, in here, there's several types. I think there's three, three or four different types. Uh, there's a slab on grade single level. Uh, we haven't built that in this community. Um, 
and then we have two other plans that we have been building in this community. Um, so I think the total, plus you're attaching them, so they look a little bit different too. Um, so it'll be a good variation. So three or four, three different, three or four different styles of homes. Okay. Now you guys can figure out something for a storm shelter for people out there if they gotta run someplace. If it's a slab on grade, if it's a slab on grade, absolutely. Um, no. We usually take. Um, well, there's two different ways you can do. It. We can either build with a crawl space underneath, or you can. Um, um, stormproof one of the rooms, and we usually do the, the main uh, mud room when you walk in from the garage. It's usually a stormproof room. Thank you, just guys. Minnesota, you get a lot of tornadoes, so we want to really be safe.
to set up for meeting it? I think it'd probably be best um, just to kind of work together our schedules and figure out a, a date and time that work best for both the public and the staff. And then with that, we probably send out mailings um, to the residents along that project. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, no old business, new business is discussion of regarding the open council seat. Um, do we want to proceed with filling the position, waiting till elections? And then being in so close to the election, I think I just believe it. I agree. That's my. I mean, but by the time you you do it, I mean you're going to be August before they're they're in here. Yeah. So. Roy, any comments? Not really. Election time's coming up, and uh, we can hold off until election time. Because I mean, as, as soon as the election's done, we can bring the person on, right. you know, yeah. right away. Mm -hmm. So. Amendments. Let's go with Wendy on that. So at the last council meeting um, from the open forum, we had some discussion with with our city attorney and um, started looking at our accounts payable procedure and realized that we needed to do a little bit of updating. Um, I don't think you can see it up on the screen, but the stuff that's in the red, like up here, is stuff we added um, language that we added um, from Matt. And the rest of it, where the strike throughs are, we just um, updated it because a lot of it still had our administrative assistant, which was Chris from years ago, and the city administrator, which now we have a city clerk. So this basically was just updating the policy that we already had in place, adding some language that we got from um, Matt that talked about why we actually had the policy. Um, and then, like I said, just updating who does the functions, took out the city administrator, made it city clerk, um, took out administrative assistant because I it went back to me now since the administrative assistant is done. So that's really all that was there. And then um, the other part we had in here was um, we added if we ever decided we wanted to go to digital signatures. Um, so we added the language from um, our city attorney regarding digital signatures also. So um, this is just coming before you for approval of the updates to the policy that we've had in place since 2008. And we also will be looking at our couple of our other policies, like our accounts receivable policies, our payroll. Some of it still says city administrator also and administrative assistant. So when we have time, we'll be looking at those also and updating them to say city clerk. But we wanted to bring this one before you and um, get this one updated at this time. So any questions on this? So really none of the um, actual, how we actually do things, a lot, nothing really changed. Um, who can, who's, other than we took out the administrative assistant and also um, as far as doing checks, who can sign, all of that was already all there, who can sign. We also do um, resolution. Every time we change signatures, we do a resolution. So none of that changed on here. The only thing that changed was, like I said, from administrator to city clerk. Okay. I will make a motion to approve the accounts payable procedure with the new additions and changes. I'll second that. Lloyd? Aye. Roy? Aye. Ben? Aye. And I'll vote aye. Motion passes 4 to 0. Okay. Okay, I just want to make a motion to have Gregory Yeomans uh, removed from the election judges. Mayor, uh, we cannot do that because he signed up for to be an election judge at the caucus, and by state law, he's allowed to be one. Is that right, ma'am? Generally speaking, that's correct. There were some concerns that came up 
regarding the legal proceedings. And then for right now, I guess what I'd like to do is take a look at that based on the potential disqualification, uh, even though he was appointed previously. And my suggestion would be to approve the balance of the slate and uh, reconsider that one at your next meeting. So just table it for now? So table him, but both the rest of them. Or you can table the whole thing, that's up to you. I do have one question though. If you table all of it, I, I need to get them through election judge training, and if they're not appointed, I can't get them through training. Um, okay, I do have one question. Uh, Ruth Wu was an election judge last year? I didn't hear back from her if she wanted to be another be one again or not. So, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine with it. So we can just replace her with. Well, we I cannot take break up until I have. I my understanding from the statute is, is that if they sign up at the caucus, they are allowed to be a judge. I I don't think we can remove them unless there's some something that they've done like a felony or something that causes them not to be able to be a judge. I don't know that you can remove them. Uh, for the record, I, I have an a, a objection. He's a, why he's unfit. Nice try, Wendy. First, first of all, he filed a false campaign violation report, 2016, against hey, me. Hey, Bob. Well, 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 let me finish. Can, I don't. Can you come up? Can you the come procedure. Up there for you? So everybody can hear you. <laughs> Fake news here might put it in the paper. No, I will not be bullied, sir. <laughs> yeah. well, Say it a louder so I can hear that for sure. And everyone else also please speak to the microphone. Are you sure this is even? Well, first of all, anybody can hear me. In uh, 2016, Yeomans filed a campaign violation against me with the OAAC Office of Administrative Hearings <coughs> was dismissed. He filed one against Evan Siljander who was dismissed and a few months ago he was fined a hundred dollars by the Office of Administrative Hearings which could be checked into. And another thing which I find is fit and as, as far as I, I some of us concerned who have been paying attention Bit mad, as you can see, is they should all be disqualified. Here, here's one of their little modus operandi. Roll your eyes, Wendy. When it when, when it comes to election day, this this should be this should there should be some sanctity involved with this. What they do is with their pet pet candidates, they let them post their 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 signs. You know, in the past it wasn't always even a hundred feet. It should be a thousand feet, but a hundred feet's the lot. And then they leave. Then the polling booths are right there. They leave the shades open. They leave the shades open, so so the voters can see their pet candidate signs. I mean, that's unconscionable and despicable. And nobody says a damn thing about it. Language, please, Bob. What's that? Can you watch your language, please? I said nobody does a damn thing about I know. it. I know. And you give her a pass for F, F bombing? <laughs> oh, I think you're afraid of her. Jeez. But, but it's Wendy Madsen owns the big five to ten thousand dollars more than she should. I'm done. Man, I could be up there an hour. Oh, sorry, we have to make finish the election judge. Do you, so, um, I'm, I'm happy to. If Greg can't or you need me, I'm happy to do so. I'll appoint you, so if in case I need help or I need you, yeah. or I mean, I don't know how many I'm going to need. Yep, that's fine. Pardon me, please follow up that $100 fine that he was fined. So, do we have a motion then to table this till? When do you need to start? We I need, to, to, we I just need, need to, to appoint everybody if you're going to look into Greg's. I don't know anything about what he's even talking about, so I have no clue what he's talking about. But okay. You talk about me? 
I don't know what you're talking she about. She, does, she I does not know, know about. Oh, we'll, we'll follow, follow it up. We can Correct. give you the information. So, and I don't know that that disqualifies him. I, I don't know. I mean, Matt can look into it, but okay. But we don't have to appoint it, and if we have to remove him later, we can. If you appoint right. everybody else, you can table mm -hmm. his until the July meeting. I can probably get him into a training after that if I can. I'll look at the dates. So we do the rest of it. Go ahead and make a motion. Or you can appoint them all and remove him. I don't know how you want to do it, Matt. No. Madam Mayor, council members, that I would recommend that you appoint those on the list, except for that individual. And I apologize, I don't know his last name. Um, and <laughs> not include him. Don't give approval and then look to remove it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Thank you. And we want to add him to that list, correct? Yes. Correct. Correct. You got this motion? Lloyd? <coughs> really? Okay. Do you want me to do it? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a motion then to remove Greg Yeomans from the election judge temporarily to add Drew Klug um, so that Matt can look into um, information regarding Greg. So we'll need a motion. Does that work? Okay, then we'll need a motion to approve the current election judges. That was my motion. Yeah, I need a second. Second. I'll second that. All right, Roy. Aye. Lloyd. Aye. Ben. Aye. And I will vote aye. Motion passes four to zero. Um, upcoming meetings is Park and Rec meeting. Uh, July 2nd at 5.30. It's my understanding that planning and zoning has been canceled due to um, nothing coming up. So, any other meetings? That's it. All right. Were you, were you going to say something about uh, WDF? It was in the consent. Oh, it was in the consent. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, acknowledgements. I have a few. I would like to acknowledge Drew Blue, Kurt Anderson, and Chuck Smallwood. Uh, for Park and Rec and Planning and Zoning. I thank them for their service and everything that they did for the city. Along with Abby Myers, who was on Park and Rec. Uh, Colin Ricks for all of his hard work at the disc golf course. Um, I just recently attended his Eagle Scout Award that he received a week, <laughs> week and a half ago. It was Saturday. Um, Deputy Jake, um, I've been getting a lot of good feedback on him and he is now gone until August. End of August. End of August. So, but we, we're getting a lot of good feedback. So that's good to hear. Um, Joe Menard for her service here with the city. It's a sad um, that we had to take her resignation, but I think she did a lot of good work for the city. Um, had a lot of respect for her, and I hope that we continue to see her throughout the community. Uh, Matt Russell for sticking with us for Park and Rec and getting a few more commission members and for the work that he's been doing. Anybody else? Pretty much seeing everyone. All right. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we are adjourned.